something? The Bowie's leaving tonight, and I heard there was two ton aboard the Portland when she came in the other evening. Two ton? Yeah, that's right. They found the mother load. N nuggets just lying on the ground up there. Rich yellow Klondike gold. And everybody's going. I heard a brigadier general up and went. The mayor's going. Women are going. Oh, hell, if I wasn't married, I'd go. Well, it's only 500 for a steak. No, you need 2,000. I wouldn't chance her for less. What? Are you going, John? God's name are you doing? Having a little fun, Father. This is outrageous. Every man here will be Dr. Day's pay. No! It's my fault, not theirs. If you weren't my son, I'd fire you. Well, what have you gotten into now, Sandy? Oh, hush. You're a tough old dog. You've survived worse than this. Be right there, Mother. Well, go on, Sandy, and stay out of the brush. Go. What's Sandy gotten into now? He stepped on a thorn. <laughs> He'll be fine. And uh, are you fine? Well, yes. Why do you ask? I've been worried. For months now, he seems so restless. Aren't you happy at the mill? Has father been working you too hard? Hard work is not a problem, mother. As long as you know what you're doing it for. And what is it? You were father's favorite. Now, you hardly talk to each other. He used to take you everywhere, teaching you how to saw and chop and... <sighs> I was so afraid you'd get hurt. I kept wishing I had daughters. Well, Arthur and I are glad you didn't. <laughs> John, you are your father's son. And ever since you were a little boy, you wanted to be just like him. Why has that changed? He's changed. And I've changed. In what way? He used to laugh. He used to have dreams. Well, I have dreams. Dreams of finding out who I am and what I want. And I'm not sure I can find them while I'm here. The Journal of John Thornton, age 22, first entry, September 17th, 1897. I start this journal because tomorrow I set off on a new life. It pains me to leave this way, but I must show him I'm no longer a boy, but a man. I'm off on a great and exciting adventure. I'm going to the Klondike. You're not serious. I am. This Klondike madness is for utter fools. You, you, there's more gold in the dining room at home than you'll ever find in the Yukon. But it's yours, not mine. I'll give it to you then. It still wouldn't be mine. Rupert, please. You can understand that John might want to go. Oh, then he should go. I'm not saying that. Father. What? Father, I don't think. That's right, you don't think. Now, enough of this nonsense. You get yourself properly dressed and get back to your work. My God, you don't listen. I listen perfectly well. Well, then you don't hear. Enough! I built this business for you and for Arthur. How can you just walk away from it? Father, I don't know why you built this business. Sometimes I think we'd be better off if you hadn't. Come 
coming back. Here's your hundred. Yeah, they fetch a better price in the Yukon. Our little ruckus. You just let bygones be bygones. After weeks at sea, we're finally heading up Chatham Strait through the scattered coastal islands of Alaska. It's a wild and beautiful country. I could hear the dogs caged below. Many were stolen from their homes to be sold as sled dogs. I think they're anxious, like me, to be free and heading for adventure. Afraid of me, boy. It's okay, you see? You missed on purpose, didn't you? You're such a fine dog. Skagway Beach, gateway to the Yukon, gold country. It's an enormous and challenging world. Everyone is anxious to be on the trail fast. Even though it is still late fall, it has already snowed up north in Dawson City. That's where we're all headed. Winters here don't wait on anybody. I'll be able to get about 300 for these lead dogs. Well, I don't think it's still less than 250, I'll tell you that. Run it down next to those rough bucks. Yeah, I got the dried potatoes over here. There they are. Yeah. <laughs> there. We done made it, didn't we? Well, yes, this far anyway. I talked to this fella just come in from Dawson. He showed me a poke the size of a Thanksgiving Day yam. He made $10,000 in a week off a plaster claim. You believe it? What's a plaster claim? <laughs> you sure are a G-Jacko, ain't you? Hey, wait a minute. How far is it to Dawson? Dawson, sir, is just a few days over the White Pass Trail. An easy week's float down the Yukon River. There's the only map you'll need. 
Good luck to you, friends. Yeah, you too. Well, if I do any kind of hardwood, I guarantee it. It's got an excellent blade. Just touch the teeth, but be careful. It might cut your skin. And for you, I'll give you a very good price on that. How much? Twenty-five dollars. Excuse me, excuse me. Can I look at that saw? This saw has been used. See how the points are all burned? This saw has been coated with something to make it look new. It's an old saw. This bad saw. You give me new saw. New hatchet, 25 pound nails, same price as bad saw. That's your chat Charlie used being so friendly too. He don't take kindly to white men. Why not? One killed his daddy. Them Indians carry a grudge. One sold him a bad saw. I carry a grudge too. All right, 150, gone once, gone twice. Sold, 150. Don't go away, boys. I got something real special for you. Remember me? No, 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 stop! He's gonna kill him! He'll kill you before you kill dog. <laughs> gonna start the bidding at 200. Do I have an offer? 300! <laughs> oh, I hear 350. Don't want so rash, huh? All right. Sold. 300. That's it for today. I've got $200. The rest is with my things. Well, I guess you better go get it then, son. my dog. Sold. He's on his way to Dawson. But I bought him. Full price buys it, Archie. <laughs> you gotta be a mite quicker with your fists and your money. sell the dog to? Tell me who got him. Not my business. Oh, I should have let you buy the saw. Something has drawn me to Buck. I knew I wanted him as soon as I saw him. And I bought him fair and square. Now I hear some Frenchman who's running a mail sled up to Dawson's got him. Well, that's where I'm headed, and I'll get him back. Count on it, Buck. Eh hey bien, Buck. Time for school, eh? 
That's no buck. Mm. Yeah, buck. Now we begin. Steady, steady. came down on Skagway sooner than anybody expected. We must be on the White Pass Trail heading north right away. I wonder if the others are as excited as I am. None of us really knows what we're headed into. We only know that the payoff at the end is worth it. It's a steep trail and tricky footing. To make it harder, everybody has to carry a whole year's worth of provisions to the Klondike. That's the law. This adventure is turning into hard, painful work, but my spirits are still high. I met in Skagway. Poor devil. He had the same high hopes I do. Nobody in camp talks much. Gold is the only thing on their minds. I feel very much alone. I listen to the fire crackle and keep seeing that man frozen solid in the snow. I wonder if the glorious adventure I planned isn't just a foolish dream. The going gets harder all the time. The dogs and horses plot ahead obediently, but why do we keep going? They say only one in ten ever make it. If that's true, I know I'll be the one. Excuse me, sir. May I borrow your rifle? For what? That horse, he's been abandoned, and he needs to be put out of his misery. I ain't got a bullet to spare. Maybe I should shoot you. Right 
leave him. Don't worry, not your business. The bullet's on me. Damn fool. I understand this mercy for animals. I am called Charlie. What are you called? I'm called John Thornton. I don't know why we're going over Chilkoot Pass with the new dog. We should be going over White Pass. It's lower and it's shorter. It'll save us time. Not this year, Francis. Not with the Klondikers on the White Pass. This dog is too dumb. It's too big. Why do you want to bring in a green dog now? You see? You see? He's nothing but trouble before we start. Spitz always fast, new dog. No, Spitz is a lead dog because he knows other dogs. He knows this big, dumb horse of yours is nothing but trouble. Buck will be good, Francis. Maybe he'll be as good as Spitz. Anyway, where are you building your cabin? White River, other side of White Pass. By yourself? You need two men to use a whipsaw. Let's travel together, Charlie. I'll help you build your cabin. Help me over the pass. Why not follow the others? I'm not lost. I just can't get over this pass alone. I need a friend, Charlie. Where are you going? Take your horse back to Skagway and get you something warm to wear. But I need the horse to get my gear over the pass. We carry on our backs. Make many trips. Learn to carry like Lincoln. Make your legs strong. Charlie took my horse back to Skagway. It never would have made it this far. We make trip after trip to bring all our supplies to the summit. Charlie says we'll be on this trail for a month. It is so cold, so exhausting. But at least I've made a friend. How many more trips, Charlie? Four. I'm not going anymore. It was a joke, Charlie. You know, if we both go, somebody might steal our stuff. Here. Steal from Cassius to kill. Never happens. Little. Red Fisk, he stole my dog. Maybe you lose dog. Buck. He'd be a sled dog, right? Maybe I'll see him up here on the pass. This winter, White Pass not good for dogs. But maybe Chilkoot Pass. There's another pass? It's higher. It's longer. But I think dogs use now.
What Charlie said hit me hard, but he was right. Buck wasn't stolen. I lost him. It was up to me to find him, and I will. Chilkoot Pass was hidden somewhere ahead in all that blur of white. I should have told Charlie I was going, but he'd have just called me crazy. I had to find Buck. That was more important than finding gold. I was very foolish. I'm sorry. How did you find me, Charlie? How did you find me? I not find you. Your dog, he find you. When you get lost on Chilkoot Pass, I search. I see mail team. They say, new dog try to stop team on trail. He must get your scent. We reached the lake country and found the canoe Charlie hid away for getting to his cabin site. We can use it later for the last leg of our journey to Dawson City. But first, I've got to help Charlie build his cabin, as I agreed. I think of Buck constantly. He's probably in Dawson by now. He's strong, smart. He'll make it, and I will too. Something is wrong. You need rest. No, let's go further. I've got a little more left in me. How can they send us back out so soon? We deserve at least a week's rest. It would be much better for the team.
All right. I'm turning in. Keep the fire high. Rest well, mon ami. Last night, the river froze solid. I will not reach Dawson this season. We'll stay here, and I'll help Charlie finish his cabin. Grandfather, build this for my father. The spirits are here. It's a fine place for a cabin. You know, Charlie, two angels could not saw their first log with one of these things and not get into a fight. Don't pull back so far. Pull straight. Charlie, how do they settle arguments where you come from? I enjoy working with lumber again. It's something I know. Something I learned from my father. So many obstacles and delays. Sometimes I think about abandoning this dream of finding gold. Then I remember Buck, and I know I'll go on. I wonder what's troubling Charlie. He's not one for talk, and it does no good to try. Are you going somewhere? To Wrangell. Wrangell? That's 800 miles. Why? I have wife and children there. Well, when are you coming back? When ice break up, then you can take River to Dawson. Well, that, that's mid-May. What am I supposed to do for five months? Wait. I have time to think important thoughts. No. No, I'm going with you. No, we make deal. I help you overpass, you help me build cabin. Well, when I'm done, I'm going to Dawson if I have to walk. No, you never travel alone in winter. 
Never. You are. I will not die. You're afraid. No. Yes. Good. Hawk check always afraid on first flight. Keep this. Burn the tip of the sweet grass. Smudge yourself. Imagine Hawk in flight. Maybe you will see. Thank you. And this, this is for you. It's a St. Christopher's medal. It's for travelers. Thank you. Five hundred mile in three months. Their feet are torn and sore. They need a good long rest. I got two ton of mail back there. Sell them. You'll get triple your money. But this is the best dog I ever owned. Get a fresh team, or I'll hire someone else, Perro. Cute, isn't he? Well, you know, Fro brought these dogs in half dead. This is so exciting. <laughs> Mush! Mush on there! Mush! Oh, don't! I can't bear to see them hurt. You have to whip them to get them moving, baby sister. Ask anyone. Them dogs need a rest. Anymore. It could help them dogs a mighty lot by breaking out the sled. The runners is froze fast. Throw your weight against the sled, left and then right. <laughs> now she'll run. Mush! Mush! Mush on there! Oh, I never thought they'd get that moving. Charlie's been gone almost a month. It's turned brain-numbing, spine-freezing cold. It's so cold that when you spit, it never reaches the snow. Just freezes and crackles in mid-air. How much longer can I take this? I hate to admit my father may have been right. on the sled, it'll slow us down. Can't you understand that? No, she can't, so let's not take the time to argue about it. Now what's wrong with them?
Thanksgiving's come and gone, and now Christmas? Why did I ever come here? For gold? For adventure? To prove something to my father and myself? Whatever. It doesn't seem very important right now. How will we make it? We'll make it. The food's almost gone. We're barely halfway to Dawson. We'll cut the rations and increase the daily run. I had what they call cabin fever. Like a fool. I bought those fairy tales about all the gold up here. They called this the land of gold. What land? Where? Frozen solid under three feet of ice and four feet of snow on top of that. Where were you, Dad? We were best friends. We did everything together. I didn't go anywhere. Things like Charlie. Things like Charlie. Meditate like Charlie, trying to be and think like him. Maybe it'll help. I've almost made up my mind to go back. What did I hope to find? A new and different life? Thrills and adventure? Maybe I only wanted change and independence. Dawson, sir, and we're short on food for the team. Can you spare anything? Those dogs, they won't make it to Dawson, food or not. It's 200 miles, and the ice is breaking beneath your trails. We've made it this far. We'll make it to Dawson. Only a fool would try it. Well, only a fool would live out here. Come on, we're wasting our time here. Get up, Buck! Get up! Buck! Get up, Buck! Get up! Get up! If you strike that dog again, I'll kill you. Stop! I'm here. Take it easy, Buck. Now he's mine. Get out of here! It's okay. It's okay, Buck. Come on. Mush! Mush on there! Hallelujah. Spring finally arrived. I don't think I would have survived without Buck. 
He's healthy and so am I. We're both anxious to hit the trail. I may find my gold after all. What luck? Okay, you want to play? I'm ready for you. Come on. <laughs> Charlie, you've come. You've come back. You all right, John? Is this all your family? This is the Bear Clan. White rivers are hunting ground. Maybe three. theirs. How you find Buck again? He found me. It is second time. You will go soon? Yes. For my people, change is hard. They not go over mountain with no name. They see all the things of life on this side. No reason to go. But you go. Why? Gold? Gold is anonymous. No, not you. Why you go? To see more things of life. John Thornton is hawk. Chick has died. Now are days of flying. There's Bannon Dawson. He helped you. He is Asa Gosselin. He be your friend. Wait. For me? Why? You build good house. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you. Important to stay in canoe. That was a joke, right, Charlie? Finally, we began our journey downriver to Dawson City. It was great having Buck at my side. We passed the wreckage of a sled. It belonged to those people I took Buck away from. They must have broken through the ice and drowned. Those poor souls and the poor dogs they took with them never had a chance. We arrived in Dawson City. That far north, the last snows of winter still persisted. All the enthusiastic bustle and activity made me ready to join the hunt for gold again. What is it, Buck?
beer, please. I warrant you my skookum could start a sled with 500 pounds and walk off with it. Now I've got a dog, Pete. Could walk away with 600 pounds. Or my name ain't Ballard Mahoney. Hey, mister. See you bring your pup. I don't suppose that mongrel of yours is up to pulling a sled. He'll pull, sir. Buck will pull with more muscle than any cur of yours. My curly can start 700 pounds. I doubt Buck could budge 300. If there's going to be a competition, gentlemen, let's have it clean and fair. Yeah. What do you say? Do you have a challenge? Buck can start 1,000 pounds. <laughs> Is that so? And break it out. And walk off with it 20 yards. Exactly so. Well, I've got $1,000 that says that he can't. And here it is. I've got a load of flour standing outside. We'll make it 20, 50-pound sacks. 200 in gold. And I pledge my outfit. It'd bring 1,500 on a fair market. I'd like to see another 700 on the bar, sir. <laughs> you shall sure have it. Shall I put this dog to the test? Oh, yeah! All right. oh. Oh. Three to one, he can't. Throw it away, fine gold dust, sir. You understand the challenge, sir? I understand, sir, that you are about to part with $1,700 in gold. <laughs> Buck, listen. As you love me, Buck. As you love me. Now, Buck. Key! Ha! Key! Ha! Now, Buck. Mush! Looking for Aisa Gosselin? Well, you, you come to the right place. I'm Jesse, his daughter. John Thornton, pleased to meet you. You have that blade strung pretty tight, Miss Gosselin. I like it that way, John Thornton. <laughs> come with me.
All the rich claims were staked back in 96, before word ever got to the outside. So the gold rush is a farce? Call it what you will. What are you doing here? Maybe adventure? And a little gold, too? <laughs> There's no such thing as wanting a little gold, John. Didn't Charlie tell you gold was Tamanamus? I heard him say it. It means the devil. Some gold mucker killed his father over a placer claim on the Pelly River. Claim was on Tlingit burial ground. I shot the man. Where did you find this? There's a rumor of a lost mine. A score of men have died looking for it. But a few, they have found it. Klondike's been scoured clean. But the vein surfaces again to the east, in the lake country. There's an abandoned cabin there. Gold is there. Just waiting. The mine cable snapped in his face. I came to take him home, but... He won't go? Must be very hard on you. I get by. I take care of Asa. I tutor some kids around here. I take in laundry for the miners. Cut their firewood for them, too? <laughs> Do you have a place to stay? There's a cabin up at Mosquito Mine. Asa still owns it. You're welcome to use it. Thanks. Is the claim being worked? No. Not since the accident. Well, maybe I can work it for shares. Oh, I think Asa would like that. I'll do that. Goodbye. Mosquito Mine was only a short distance from town. Is my long, hard journey finally going to have real meaning? Ace has given me a chance to make my fortune. My luck really has changed. It's not like home, but it'll be a roof over my head. Now I have another friend, Jessie. I think I'd like her to become more than a friend. Anyway, with Buck at my side and the challenge of the mine, she's given me new hope. a long way from home. You're not a Klondiker, John. What's a Klondiker like? Rude, loud, selfish, gold hungry. You're right, I don't see myself like that.
My hopes are fading. The mine is played out. The little bit of gold it gives up is hard to find and won't begin to support me, let alone a wife. It hurts to face failure. Oh, come on. Let bygones be bygones. Where's your pup? <laughs> What's the matter, boy? Don't you drink? Looks like it. Where are we going? Old Swede's place. We'll keep him there for a while till I find a buyer. He must be worth 500 now. <laughs> Maybe six. John. What's wrong? Buck is gone. Has he been here? No. What happened? I don't know. I, I, I woke up and he was gone. I'm very worried about him. Buck, what happened? Easy, Buck. Easy. 
John, be careful. Buck's starting to act strange. I'm used to him being right at my side. Now he sneaks out at night and is gone for hours. It's as if someone, something, is calling to him and he has to go. I'm getting down to the bottom on money. If I don't accomplish what I set out to do, this whole year of my life will have been for nothing. I don't want to leave Jesse, but I think often of Ace's lost mind. Friday. Are you going back, Jesse? I think so. I couldn't stay. I don't like it here. <laughs> they have a new teacher at the school. <laughs> Will you be staying on? If I came back with you now, only half of me would be there. I can't say why exactly. Wait till spring. I'll come back then. I promise. I'll keep the door unlocked for you, John Thornton. Darren lost mine, is it? I can't tell you that.
Jesse was right. It is the lost mine that's holding me here. I know the gold is there, like Asa said. And I'm going to get it. Let's go, Buck. I'm alone again, and afraid. There are ye hat Indians in these woods with no love for gold-grubbing intruders. They can't hate me. I haven't grubbed anything. What, Buck? I go to Asa's house, his room. I feel what you felt. Why did you come here, Charlie? I come to take you back. Then you've walked a long way for nothing. Why do you believe Asa? It's not such a mine. Then I won't find it, and nothing will be lost. Maybe your life. Maybe. You go over a mountain with no name, think you find peace. But your mind is too full. Can you sit for an hour and think of nothing? No. Then open your eyes and see everything. No. I do want to see everything, Charlie. That's why I'm doing this. Look at Buck. He used to be somebody's house pet. But now he's a match for anything. He belongs here, Charlie. And so do I. What are you doing, Charlie? Build cash for supplies. Why? We travel light, Indian style. Raven speak to me. He said, go with friend over mountain. Never knew one so stubborn as you. What does it mean? It means stay out. Yehats, this is their land.
Thank you, Asa. Charlie! Charlie! Charlie, look. Jose Ogiano. This is the lost mine, Charlie. The blaze trail was leading right here. And those gold pans? What else could it be? We're about to become very rich men, Charlie. Never say what is about to be. dollar pan. This is the lost mine. It wasn't a dream. <laughs> the stream is clogged with gold. I'll be a very rich man as rich as my father. Somehow I don't get a lot of satisfaction out of that. Buck stays away longer and longer. I think he's found his natural home here. If this is where he belongs, I will have to go home without Buck. That won't be easy. He's gone for three days. He'll come back.
Come on, Buck. Come on, Buck. Oh, you came back. What a good boy. Oh, good boy, Buck. things about me of course I could read you what Asa said about you I liked it here it is Charlie's as spare and tough as a red pine taproot <laughs> Who taught you English? My father. He learned from missionaries and Asa. Asa told me what happened to your father. I'm sorry. He was a great man. Last chief of Bear Clan. Each day I think of him. Are you like him? No one is like him. And your father, are you like him? I used to want to be exactly like him. He was the king of the lumber shanties in northern Michigan. I used to follow him everywhere. I saw it and chopped just like he did. He taught me how to throw axes. Then we moved to Seattle and he got his own mill. Then he changed. Come on, Amos. Charlie has opened my eyes. He makes me see why I came here, to prove to my father and to myself what I could do. But I am still left with an empty feeling. Does a man change when he lets gold become his master? I hate to think of leaving this land. If only I could bring part of it back with me. Like Buck. No, I truly love him. So I just have to let him go. I love you, Buck. But you're home now. Let me go home, too. I'll never forget you, Buck. Never. Go on, Buck. Go on, Buck. Go now. Go!
never for gold. It is to bring Buck here. It's a great gift. John Thornton. Find John Thornton. Well, we won't be needing all this. We'll be traveling light, Indian style. We're uneasy and anxious to get out. The Yi hats will be coming back. I don't want all of this gold. One or two bags will give me all that I need. I could not save him, Buck. I could not save him. I'm not going home with bulging bags of gold, but I'm a lot richer than when I arrived. I found wealth in things like a warm fire when it's freezing, the beauty of snow-capped peaks, the companionship of a noble dog, the love of a wonderful woman, and the strength, support, and friendship of a wise Indian guide and counselor. These are the treasures I am taking from this land, and I feel like the richest man in the world.
Thank you, Buck. Goodbye. Goodbye. In the year, it's tell of a ghost dog that runs at the head of a wolf pack. They fear this dog. Each fall when the Yihats follow the movement of the moose, there is a certain valley which they never enter. And each fall, it is said, the ghost dog leads his pack back to that valley. There, at a place on a stream, he howls loud and long. And it is said that his howl is heard for a hundred miles around. It is said, it is the call of the wild. It is the cry of love.